<laughs> well, Christmas is hardly over. And here we are celebrating Epiphany. And as Neil reminded us, we have those other liturgical days in between. Epiphany, a time of the coming of the wise men, but which the church has largely forgotten about. In fact, many Christians have actually not heard of Epiphany. But Epiphany celebrates the signs that God gave to the world of who Jesus is. And they're the signs with God saying, this is the one. And Epiphany is the church's way of saying back, and we can never be the same again. <clears throat> the early church was a church full of excitement and expectation. They anticipated the return of Christ at any time. Persecutions forced them to be aware of their faith and to live out. And the early church celebrated Epiphany, the period between Christmas and Lent, and you see it there on the screen, emphasizing God's presence and manifestations to us. The period that focuses on the expectation of God's future and ultimate revelation. And yet today, many in the church no longer expect Christ to be made manifest. Maybe they've stopped looking for a revelation of Jesus as God's son. Maybe the sense of excitement and expectation has been lost by many Christians. Maybe the excitement of Christmas has become too much and they've forgotten all about it. And this is so sad. Because Epiphany is a reminder that God appears miraculously to us in places and in ways that we don't expect. And so we'll be prepared when God comes again. Epiphany simply means an appearance or a manifestation, particularly, particularly of a divine being, or an illuminating discovery, especially one that comes unexpectedly. It actually has huge meaning and implication in the Christian faith. As I said before, it marks the first manifestation of the appearance of Jesus to the Gentiles. It's a signal that God loves everybody, loves Gentiles as well as Jew. He loves you and me, he loves everybody. He loves those who don't come to church and we're here on Boxing Day. Things like that. And he includes them all in his plan of salvation. Epiphany is also a celebration of breaking down of dividing walls between Jew and Gentile or between different groups in the church, between denominations, between congregations, and it is the end of hostilities between groups of people. That is why it is so important. Ephesians 2.14 says this, For he, Jesus, is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. It is Jesus who breaks down the dividing walls. And if you want a dividing wall with someone, let Jesus break that dividing wall down. Epiphany challenges us to reconsider all the people whom we see as outside the boundaries of God's love. It challenges us to abandon our tribalism racially, nationally, and especially denominationally. It challenges us to expand our tents to welcome even those whom we would prefer not to love. And I believe it's a burning issue in the church because loving those outside of our tribe is difficult. But Christ makes it possible. And that is the epiphany message. The context. Only Matthew has the story of the adoration of the Magi. Provides with a wonderful insight into epiphany. It's a story that highlights how coming to Christ is about our hearts, not our heads. 
the Magi in their hearts came to see the Christ child and God allowed them to see wondrous things. Interestingly, Matthew's Luke focus is quite different to Luke's. There were shepherds from nearby. The Magi came from afar, from the east. Instead of a stable, the Magi went to Herod's palace. Instead of a manger, they bought gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, suitable for a king. Instead of angels, Matthew tells us of dreams. And at this point in the narratives, Luke has focused, has foc- Luke has focused on the joy and wonder of Jesus' birth. Matthew while commenting briefly on Jesus' birth, including a lengthy genealogy of Jesus, turns his focus to what happens later and refers to some shocking events that follow Jesus' birth. There are significant contrasts between the two writers. Now in our Christian pageants, shepherds and wise men gather together around the manger. Yes, there they all are together. The timing of their arrival is actually not important. We get all concerned about that. I don't think it's important at all. What is important is that the shepherds represent those who are nearby and are utterly amazed and surprised, while the wise men have travelled a long way following that bright star, knowing that something special had happened. And despite all the differences, we need to remember one key thing. That Jesus came to save the world from its sins, Jews and Gentiles alike. So the wise men, or the three kings. A Christian comedian once said the story would be very far different had they been men, be women instead of men. Women would have asked directions immediately, so would have got there on time. <laughs> Once in Bethlehem, woman would have helped deliver the baby, cleaned up the stable, and bought cuddly little cute outfits the baby Jesus could wear on his trip home. Who then are these three, three kings of Orient, as the carol portrays? Well, the carol has one thing right. They came from the origin. The Bible does not say there were three, nor that they were kings. It simply says that they were men or magi, with the word magi or magol meaning masculine, of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And they were not there the night Jesus was born. In fact, they probably did not show up until months after his birth. When they turned up, they found the young child was no longer in a stable, but living in a house with Mary and Joseph. And it's likely that the time they arrived was after Christmas in the new year. And that actually, when you think about it, makes Epiphany a New Year message. And each of the gifts suggests a New Year's resolution that we should offer the Lord today. So pause a moment and look at those three gifts in more detail. The first gift is gold. Obey Jesus as king. Gold is prized for three reasons. It's a rare metal. It's got a brilliant natural luster. So it's brilliance and rarity. And it resists most acids, neither corrodes nor tarnishes. So a sense of permanence. So we sing in the church, don't we? The king. No, just the verse. <laughs> He's so keen. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> yep. Even though we've just sung those words. Many Christians do not understand that in being a Christian, 
we have a king to obey over us all to reign. King of a kingdom so out of this world that its citizens, as its citizens, we love our king with a deep, deep love. Because our king loves us so much in return. King of a whole life, he calls us to make a total room. Every part of our life. And so when we sing that verse about King of Kings, over us all to reign, how much does he reign over you all of your life? Today to obey Jesus as King, more and more and even better from this day on. First New Year's resolution. Next was vacancies. Worship Jesus as God. Frankincense is a gum resin from a tree native to it ranked as valuable as gold. And so in the Christmas carol we sing this. Frankincense. sing the words, worship. It is our top priority. God's heart, God's desire is to see the nation's worship. The goal of the gospel is worship. Mission and evangelism are temporary tasks. They exist only to lead people to worship. And in heaven, evangelism and missions end. But worship goes on forever. So if we grow careless with our worship that God values so highly, praising, praying, giving, preaching, reaching to others, a worship of Jesus. But you know, many people look at coming to church regularly as an option. Or they may even just go through the motions of coming. Maybe we sing half-heartedly, possibly with our minds somewhere else. Or praying becomes absolutely stale. And dare I say, we even doze through the sermon. And our offerings are what's left over. Not a priority. The words of Isaiah 29 13 are much more applicable than we might expect. He writes this, they draw near him with their lips, but listen to this part, their hearts are far from him. They come with their lips, but their hearts are far from them and from him. Take heart though, because for each one of who goes through the motions, there are 10 who do not, do 10 who do not even come to go through do not even worry about going through the motions. You see, worship of Jesus is not just a matter of coming to church for an hour or an hour and a half a week. The Bible commands us to offer our body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So in 2022, will we get even more serious about our worship of Jesus? May we resolve to worship Jesus as God more and better starting today. Intention number two. Myrrh. Accept Jesus as a sacrifice. Like frankincense, myrrh is an expensive exotic gum from a thorny shrub, also native. To, it was a very rare and very costly, treasured for its strong scent. The gum was also, Egypt and Israel, was chiefly used to preserve for burial. So myrrh's connection with death is the reason it was used for a sacrifice. And so in the Christmas carol, we sing this, don't we? Myrrh is mine. 
it fit in the room. Peace of life of gathering room. I want to suggest there are three facts true of almost all people. They know there's a God in heaven. There's a God somewhere. They know they've offended God. And they don't know what to do about it. And most people know that somewhere deep in their hearts. Someone who's been on drugs, this sort of thing, and suddenly get a realisation that where they're going, the life they're leading is just not the life they should be leaving. They're aware there's a God, there's something greater than themselves in the midst of it all. Many intu- intuitively des- sense that the son deserves punishment. Not just any punishment, but actual capital punishment. Someone who must die, maybe the old self must die, blood must be shed. The animal sacrifice of the old test preserved only as a vivid reminder that a perfect sacrifice was needed. And when Jesus came into the world and he offered a single sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice for our sin, which we say during the communion, listen for those words as they said this morning, if they said in the service, the perfect sacrifice for our sins. I think about them. The sacrifice to end all sacrifices. And then he sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus will never walk the Calvary way again. Never again will Jesus spill his blood on the cross. He doesn't need to. It's been done. Because in the chilling winds winds of an April day, Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, died the death of the guilty to take away sin and once and forever. An atheist once said this, I do not believe in God. But if I meet him after I die, I believe he will treat me fairly. Isn't that interesting? If I meet him after I die, I don't believe in him. If I meet him after I die, I believe he will treat me fairly. What does that atheist mean? I think he's saying this, God owes me because I'm a decent moral person. Not because I worship Jesus. Not because I try to live Jesus out of my daily life. Sadly, many have that same sense of self-righteousness. But to get right with God, we must transfer trust from ourselves to Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. So may we resolve as our third resolution to accept Jesus again as the sacrifice for sin. And transfer all of our trust, not just some of it, all of our trust to him and no one or nothing less. Well, to sum up, what are we going to give Jesus this new year? The gifts of the Magi suggest three answers. Bring him gold by obeying Jesus as king. Bring him frankincense by worshipping Jesus as God. Bring him myrrh by accepting Jesus as a sacrifice for our sins. And as we go into 2022, once more there is much uncertainty around the world due to the dynamic, up due to the pandemic, and the Omicron Omicron variant. Yet despite great uncertainty, let's hold on to these crucial truths and again offer Jesus our worship, our obedience. There is no glory without suffering. No crown without the cross. It has to be the cousins of the mission of any church. Any proclamation of the gospel which begins otherwise is a sham. The church was power over all suffering. It is not understood Jesus. May our offer be one of obedience and trust. It is in 2020.
22. Amén.